you, sir. How's business? Oh, not so good. Oh, it'll be better later on. Strike me, print. No wonder the business is crook. I'll have a pie. Uh, you get no pie for me, Tommy John. Go on, get us a pie. Tell you what I'll do, Giuseppe. I'll wash up the dishes for you if you give us a pie. Yeah? The last time you wash up the dishes for me, you pinch the one saveloy. <laughs> you are a very bad boy. That's what you are. Give me a... Oh, hello, Tommy. How are you, Miss Molly? Just having a pie? Just trying to kid this wart in here to give me one. I won't give you no pie unless you give me the money. Hmm. Why don't you get a job somewhere? Why don't I get a job? Haven't I been walking around town all day trying to get a job? Oh, here, Tommy. I'll buy you a pie. Oh, no. No, Miss Molly, I couldn't let you buy me a pie. No, thank you very much. Come on. It's only dripping. No, I, I don't feel a bit hungry now. My heavens, isn't it marvelous how your hunger leaves you all of a sudden? Well, I can't stay here any longer. I've got to get into rehearsal. Here, Pop. Where's that man I sent the message? Isn't he back yet? Oh, I don't know. I ain't seen him. Oh, he's the slowest man I've ever seen. He'd be gone an hour already. Look, when he does come back, tell him he's sacked. Excuse me, mister. Well, what do you want? Did I just hear you say you sacked a man? Yes. I I any vacancies? Got anyone to take his place? No. What about putting me in? Well, do you know anything about stage work? Do I? I've worked on stages all my life. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, come inside and I'll give you a chance. Come on. And don't go crook because I work here now, I've seen. Uh... Right, I'll get out of it. Huh? Come on, get on your way. Hey, you. Yeah. Go down to the store and pick out all that scenery. All right, I'll go right there. All right. Go. Hello, Jim. What are you doing in here, sir? I just got a job with that fellow over there at the stage here. You got a job, didn't you? Yeah. Gee, I'm glad. You know, you've been out of work a long while, haven't you, Tom? I'll be having to pay you back that money that I borrowed off you as soon as I get my first week's wages. Now, listen, don't worry about the money, will you? We're mates, aren't we? Mate. <laughs> And we're always going to be mates, too. You bet your life we are. Listen, no matter where you go, understand, Tom, that I'm going to be with you. And when wherever I am, I'll be with me. You I, you, uh, we're, we're mates. We're mates. Look out, look out. Here's the boss. Look out. Didn't I tell you to go down to the store? Yes, sir. I'm going away, you go. I'm going right away, sir. And you? Come with me. Right on, mister. You can't go in there. You're fired. What? You're fired. Fired, am I? Yeah, the stage manager told me to tell you you've been loafing too long on that message. He's got another bloke in your place. You're out. Oh, out, am I? Yeah. And you've got another coot in my place. That's right. We'll soon see about that. Now, look here, you can't... Hey. Hey, you. Hey. Come over here. Come on. Right, I guess I'll be right there. Come on. Come and give me a lift up with this. And you be careful this time. All right, Gussie. Not Gussie, Gus to you. Gus. Here. Here. I want you. I'm helping Gus with the basket. Well, drop it. I can't. I've got Gus has got out of the other end of it. Drop it. Good help. <laughs> Look at Gus. Here. Do you know anything about working a snow sheet? Snow sheet? I know all about a snow sheet. Oh, you do? Yes. Well, when you get the cue, the snow is falling, you pull that rope. This one over here? No, no. Not now. When you get the cue. Oh, I see. 
You needn't tell me anymore, I know all about it. Oh, you do, you understand? Yeah. yeah. Tell me, what is the cue to pull the rope? My heavens, it's going to rain in torrents. Oh, now. Uh, now. The snow is falling. Now, don't forget All right, that. I'm set. All right. Stand by, please. Please. Now, Miss Denver. Miss Denver. Miss Denver. Miss Denver. Miss Denver. Miss Denver. Where is that woman, Miss Denver? Where's Miss Denver? Miss Denver. Miss Denver. Where are you, Miss Denver? Miss Denver. Hey, Gus. That's the joker that's taken my job, eh? Yes. I don't like him. No, and I don't like him either. Listen, is he going to work that snow sheet? So I believe. Oh, he is. Well, listen, I'm going to get him in wrong. I know. Gus, go and let down the snow sheet. I'll put a couple of bits of iron in it. Someone will stop a crack. I see Molly's boyfriend has got a job as a stagehand. Which one? Tommy Dodds. Oh, Tommy Dodds? Oh, Tommy Dodds? Yes, he's always been goofy about her. Poor little Tommy, he'll wake up someday. You bet he will. I don't believe you. Poor little lady, We should know better than that. Now, come on, people, stand by, please. I want to try this snow scene and get it right. Come on, Mr. Lacey. <laughs> hey, that's not Gerald Lacey, the actor, is it? Yes, it is. How are you, Mr. Lacey? All right? <laughs> I, I got postcards here at home in our place. Oh, yes? Yeah, stuck up on the wall in my bedroom. If I bring one of your photos up, will you signify it for me, Mr. Lacey? You mean add my autograph to it? Yes, will you, Mr. Lacey? I should be delighted to do so. Thanks very much, Mr. Lacey. Here, here. I've never been here a real actor. Here, that's ever. enough of you. Attend to your business. <coughs> OK. Now, get, get set, please. You're right. We so, darling, at last I have you all to myself. We are free. Yes, dear. I'm really happy now. See, the snow is falling. The snow is falling. Falling. Oh, I forgot. Look, did you see the look in that woman's eyes? Lacey, that woman loves you. I saw love in that woman's eyes then. I did. Shut up. Didn't I tell you when you get the cue to the pull that rope, rope, the snow is falling. But I was looking at the woman. Oh, well, don't forget. All right, I won't forget it this time. I don't know what the trouble is, Mr. Lee. You hurry me up in here oh. and then keep me standing round all the Oh, time. for heaven's sake, don't you start to get temperamental. I haven't got all day to spend in now this Now, listen, place. I'm getting fed now up. Now, look here. Stop it. No arguing the point. Don't speak to me like that, Mr. Oh. Lee. Don't argue the point with me. Please start again. So, darling, at last I have you all to myself. We are free. Mr. Lee, I refuse to rehearse with this man. He's oh. pinching me. Oh, don't tell lies, you little devil. Here, get somebody else. I'm through. Oh, good, good heavens alive. I'll do it. I'm ah, the snow is falling. Oh, get away. Mind your own business. I'm going mad. I, I know I'm going mad. Here, you. Didn't I sack you? Yes, sir, but it wasn't my fault. You see, they kept me waiting at the shop and oh, I couldn't get back well, in. Well, do they, something. They Mac. kept him waiting at the shop and he couldn't get back in. You shut up. That's right. Well, do something. Yes. Make yourself useful. Yes, sir. Look, it doesn't matter who stands under the snow sheet. I want the effect, that's all. Here, come. You. Come down here and stand by Miss Denver. Look, sir, I, I'm a bit crook. I think I'm going to be sick. Well, do as you're told. Stand under the sheet. You can be sick later on. You said a mouthful. Come on, stand by. Here, you. Stand by there. When I get the cue, the snow is falling. That's it. Now, are you right? Yeah. The snow is falling. Well, that's that, isn't it? Here, Gus. Hello, piano player. Hello, piano player. You're Hi. getting on all right? I'm your own business. Listen, do you know that song, the prisoner song? I'll be carried to the new jail tomorrow here, if I have the wings of a swill here, swallow. Here, here, you. I engaged you to work on the stage, not to sing. Yeah, but you see, I was just asking him, did he know that song? I know dozens of songs. Do you? I sing all the songs that were written. Oh. Do you know that one, My Girl's Got If? What? My Girl's Got If. No, no. You mean your girl's got it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know? Huh? Uh, would you like me to sing it for you? I sing it pretty good. Do you? Yeah. OK, go on. Carry on. Play, play it for us, will you? Right. You remember when I spoke about my girl named Sue? I thought she was fine. 
someday she'd be mine. But one day she went away to the city's giddy world. She came back today, and I'm very sorry to say, you wouldn't know her if you saw her, cause she doesn't seem to fit. I'm all excited, because my girl's got it. When she landed at the station, oh, I nearly had a fit. She caused a big sensation, because my girl's got it. Her hair was brown. Now she's a platinum blonde and all her eyes. They gaze into the beyond. I had a great big roll of money, thought that pretty I would sit. But she got her fingers on it, and now my girl's got it. How'd you like that, all right? Uh, I can dance too. Oh, you can, can you? Yeah, I learned to dance up in the country. Uh, you know, it was funny the way I left the country. I was working on a farm with my father. He, he had a pig farm. There's me and my father and 15 black pigs and a brother of mine was up there. One day, one day we're all sitting down in the pigsty, arguing the point, and my father looked at me for a long time and then he swore at me. And I said, am I? And he said, yes, you are. And then we had a fight. Terrible fight. I got back and I swung at him and he ducked. And then he swung at me and I ducked. But I was a bit late with the duck. Well, time rolled on and on and I decided to leave the farm. So there's a woman named Mrs. Doyle had a farm over at the back of our place. And I says to myself, I says, I'll get a job at Mrs. Doyle's farm. So, I'm walking across the paddock and I met Florrie Doyle, the daughter, about 18, good sort. This Florrie Doyle, to all appearances, she was a, a very nice girl, but, it appears. Well, anyhow, I got a job on the farm. And one day a pig died and we had pork for about three weeks. So I didn't say anything. I just carried on, hail fellow, all wet. And then another day a cow died and we had roast beef for about two months. And then another day old Mrs. Doyle died and I left the next morning. And now I'll do the dance for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee. That's bonza. Yeah. In the meantime, you're going to help Gus. Okay, Chief. What? Chief? That's better. Good Tirano, our quest is ended. We will have to go to the king and tell him that we have failed. Yes. Yes, my lord Alphan, we have sought the missing prince a long time. As we are unable to find him, I suppose we must return to the king and let him know. 
I can see much fighting among our people when a stranger is put upon the throne of our beloved king. And I think... Why, look. It is he. He? Who? Why, the prince, the prince. The quench. I want you. Come here, my lad. Now, I haven't pinched anything. Sir, the Lord Altham wishes to speak to you. I haven't pinched anything at all, have I, Joseph? I never pinched a thing in my life. No, you pinched nothing. But one Savaloy. The bad one. <laughs> Come here, my lad. I want to speak to you on a very serious matter. I'm not going to hurt you. Tell me, what is your name? Tommy Dodge. Tommy Dodge? Yeah. And where is your mother and father? I don't remember anything about them. And is Tommy Dodd your correct name? As far as I know it is, mister. My Lord Alphan, this person has neither the brains nor the intellect of the prince. We will leave him to go his way in peace. Serrano, why should you question my actions? I think that I have found the heir to the throne. Come here, my lad. He said I got no brains. Come here. Have you a birthmark on your neck? A long red scar? What part of the neck is it on? On the back of the neck. How the hell can I see the back of my neck? Well, may I look? Yeah. No messing around, you know. Your Majesty, your name is not Tommy Dodd. You are the rightful heir to the throne of Etonia. And now I'll tell one. On my right, we have the... Da, 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 da. You want to look after him, he'll go real mad and bite someone before he's finished. He's a rat bag. Take him away. I assure you, I am not joking. Years ago, when you were a baby, you were stolen from your father's palace and taken to Australia. The king has been searching for you all these years. You strongly resemble the king, and the birthmark on your neck clears all doubt as to your being Prince Bono, heir to the throne of Etonia. We would like you to leave for home almost immediately. So, Your Highness, when you are ready, I will make arrangements for you to travel. Hey, listen. Now, now I'm the King of Baromia. What do I do? Where do I go? What happens? Well, we want you to leave for home at once. Have you anything to pack? Anything to pack? I'm standing in the middle of my portmanteau. Is there anyone you would like to say farewell to? No, I got no friends. Only my big mate, Jim. Tell you what I would like to do, I'd like to chuck a brick through the police station window before I leave. <laughs> oh, I don't think we'd better worry about that now. Oh, Molly, listen, come here. I, I... Uh, Something terrible has happened. I'm, I'm the Queen of Spain. No, the King of Etonia. Uh, the King of Etonia. You see that scar on my neck? Well, uh, my mother was born before me. I, I was born or something like that, and I was stolen and brought over here, and, and this man's going to take me back, and I've got all kinds of, of uh, soldiers and everything. So I'll say ta -da, Molly. Goodbye, Tommy. I hope you'll be very happy. She's crying. What are you crying for, Molly? Nothing. Yeah. Uh, that, that was a monster pie you bought me. By crikey, I liked that pie. One of the best pies I'd ever had. It's been very hot all day, hasn't it? Your Majesty, when you are ready, we will depart. Yes. Goodbye, Molly. Goodbye. I'm not going. I'm not going. But, Your Majesty, think of your duty to your people. You must go. You see, Molly, I've got a lot of duty to me people, or something, and I must go. Well. Goodbye, Molly. Goodbye, Your Majesty. Ah, Kapoor. 
You silly little thing, your majesty. This little lady is quite right. You are now your majesty. Yeah? That might be all right when we get over to Barassic... Batonia. Batonia? But while I'm here with the mob, I'm going to be the same as I've always been. Not your majesty, but just plain Tommy Dodd. They call me pretty names and say that I'm of royal blood, but to me that doesn't sound quite right. I belong to the price store and the people who live there. I never have a worry and I never have a care. For me to be of royal blood, a king upon a throne. I think it is all wrong, it sounds so odd. I bet that I will wake up soon and find it's all a dream. I'll find I'm not a king, but Tommy Dodd. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, I think the best we will cross the sea. Thousands of soldiers to work with you, in the land where skies are ever blue. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, beauty called me must away. The yacht is up the pier, the yacht is up the pier. But I want to be little Tommy Dons. I don't want to be a king. Molly, my pal, my own little gal, I'm going to miss you. I want to kiss you. You know this is no place for you. I'm not going in the Solomon. You're not going where? In the Solomon. Now get that right Solomon? out of your head. The Solomon up there. Oh, you mean the saloon? Yeah, I'm not going up and there. And why not? Because I don't like it. I was insulted. You were insulted? I was insulted. In what way were you insulted? Well, you did I laugh and see there was a fellow with an emu. With a what? An emu. An emu? An emu. Well, uh, a rice book of the dinner. Oh, you mean a menu? Menu, yeah. A menu. Oh. Uh, listen, what's the strong of the fella in my cabin? Which one, Your Majesty? The fella with gold braid on him and his hair parted in the middle. He tried to undress me. Oh, yes, that is quite right, quite right. That is not quite right at all. He is your valet. Now, don't try and pull my leg, Alfred, or, Alfred, or whatever you Alfred. name it. Because I know what a valet is. Now, I know. Now, what do you think a valet is? A valley is a hollow between two hills. And I don't want any arguing the point from you. You don't quite understand, Your Majesty. This is your personal servant. Yeah. He is there to attend to your clothing. Don't you understand now you are the king of Batonia? that it would not do for you to soil your hands by having to dress yourself. My hands that dirty that I'm going to soil my clothes and everything? Well, anyhow, you'll find him under the cabin, under the bed thing. I donged him. You struck him. 
And you know, outside my cabin there, there's a soldier stands there with a gun with a knife in it. Yes, yes, with a bayonet, yes, yes. He's dwelling on me. What do you mean, he's dwelling he's on me? He's dwelling you? on me, that fella is. In what way? Because, here, hold those a minute. Every time I go past, he's there like that, see? And when I go past, he goes like that. Yes, you're saluting you, your man. Yes, he's just waiting one day until I'm not looking, he's going to go like that with the gun. No, 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 your majesty, he is what we call one of the king's guard. King's guard. King's guard. I will explain to you, you see, in Betonia there is a pretender to the throne. A pretender? A pretender to the throne of Betonia. Someone's, somebody's kid to the queen. Oh, no, 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 no. There is a man who thinks he has more right to the throne of Betonia than you have. Oh, well, let him have it. I don't want the blooming old throne. I'll get a job on an ice wagon somewhere. Oh, no, no. Who wants to be king? Huh. No, no, that would be impossible. You see, this man thinks he has more right to the throne of Betonia than you have. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll work shifts. What do you mean, shifts? I'll work eight hours on the throne, and then he can work eight hours on the throne. Everybody will be satisfied then. No, no, that would be quite impossible. I will explain. You see, this man is a pretender to the throne of Betonia. Yeah. And he has quite a number of followers. Oh, yeah. These followers uh, have a plot against your life. Hey, you see, they are trying to kill you. Who is? Well, the followers of this man. Well, I'll go, I'm going down to get some firemen. I'll be back directly. There is nothing at all to worry about that. But I'm going to be killed. No, no, there is a regiment of soldiers to look after you. This regiment of soldiers is what we call the King's Guard. Now, this man is one of the King's Guard. Oh, my heavens. That soldier that was outside my cabin... He's on my side. Oh, of course, yes, yes. Oh, hi, lack a day and misery me. You, uh, you did not dismiss him? Well, you see, Alfred, not ac actually dismiss him, mm -hmm. but you remember up the other end of the boat there, there's a big long piece of iron, thick one end and thin the other. I remember, yes. I bashed him with it. Good gracious me, Your Majesty, you must not do these kind of things. He's under the bed with the wallaby. The what? The wallaby. Undress you. Oh, the valet! Yeah! Wishes me, Your Majesty, you mustn't do these kind of things. Now come along with me to the saloon and we'll straighten all this out. I'm not going up the other end. I'm going to stay in the sewerage. In the where? There. The in the steerage. Steerage? No, Your Majesty, that is quite impossible. Your place is in the saloon. I'm not going up the other end. I must crave your pardon, Your Majesty, but I insist on you going to the saloon. Who am I? You are the King of Betonia. And who are you? I am your humble servant. Well, who the hell are you arguing the point with? Oppert. Lively. <laughs> there is no time for talk now, Joiben. Two other recruits to our cause have just left. Babette? And that fellow, Hosan? Mm. I don't trust him. Uh, no more now. We, we will... Meet tonight in the usual place, and I will reveal my plans. In the meantime, you can do great work with this fool they call the king. You are to be his new lady secretary. I have arranged that. And when the time comes... Very well, my lord, uh, For the present, no more. Greetings, my lord Toronto, and the good Joyben. Where have you left his majesty? Is he unattended? I fear our new king is a little difficult. His ideas are original. I left him at the royal tailors en route, where he insisted on ordering a new court uniform. He used a strange language. With your approval, my lord, I have appointed Yoiben here to be the new king's secretary. She will teach him our ways and acquaint him with the correct procedure of the court. You will work hard with him, won't you, Yoiben? I will give his majesty my undivided attention. Tis well.
Majesty. Don't forget, you are the king. So I am. I am the king, the king of all Batonia. Surrounded by my court I stand, the finest people in the land. See the way they smile at me and hear their voices ring. They charge their glasses and they shout, His Majesty, the King. Your Majesty, are you hurt? Am I hurt? I thought I was back at Fitzroy when I got that crack. Do you know that? Come along, Your Majesty. Hey, where's my pal Jim? I presume Your Majesty is referring to the person who accompanied us. He has been put in his proper place among the menials and the scullery. Well, now listen to me, my lad. No mate of mine's going to be put amongst the skill skillions in the Maori or whatever it is. You bring him in here. Go on. But your majesty, he is only a commoner. Shut up, you. Nobody was talking to you. What if he is only a commoner? We can alter all that, can't we? Bring him in. I don't like him. Your majesty will now receive your ministers. I will introduce them. Tell them to go to blazes. But, Your Majesty, the Prime Minister has business of the utmost importance to discuss with you. Tell him to go and chase himself. I want to see my pal Jim. Tommy! Jim! <laughs> Your Majesty has no right in the courtroom. He is a commoner. He's a commoner. But listen, Alf, we can alter all that, can't we? Well, he must at least be knighted with due ceremony. Oh, is that what you do? Well, look. How, how do you knight these fellas? They kneel before you, and you touch them lightly on each shoulder with a sword. With a sword? Oh, goody, goody. Hey, give us the sword, somebody. Have you... <laughs> give us the sword, Charlie. Hey, come here and kneel down, Jim. We'll fix everything up now. Arise, Lord Jim! <laughs> oh, look, he fell over. Hey, take him away and get him a bonster uniform, all gold braid and things like that. <laughs> hey, there's your pen knife. Now, what about these parsons? Parsons? You mean ministers, Your Majesty. That's what I said, isn't it? Bring them in. Hey, Yoibe, listen. Do you ever nick out of a night time after they close the palace up? and go out to a dance or a party and, you know, oh boy, this is the life. Can we do that? Your Majesty! Who are you? <laughs> Farlap! Your Majesty, this is Jaco, the Prime Minister of Batulia. He's been with the firm a long, long time. A long, long time, Your Majesty. Mm, I knew it. I bet you were Prime Minister when Napoleon was a cadet. How's it going, Jacko? Very well, Your Majesty. The crops and the vineyards are really bound to play this season, Your Majesty. Oh, isn't that great? Look, you got all flips in your beard. Everybody happy? Yes, Your Majesty. Everything peaceful? Very, very peaceful, Your Majesty. Oh, good, now we'll have a war. But, Your Majesty. No arguments, we'll have a war. We'll pick out some nation about our own weight and we'll belt the tar out of it. 
Special Majesty's Hyperl Test. Oh. You protest, do you? Well, listen to me, Leslie. I don't allow any Prime Minister of mine to protest. Have you heard the news? No, you haven't. Well, I'll tell you. You're sacked. But, oh, but, but your majesty. I wish you'd stop saying, but your majesty, to the back of my ear. Now, I won't sack you. Listen, you're too old to be prime minister. I've got a better job for you. I'll make you a special messenger. Oh, goody, 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 goody. But your majesty, my old feet are too tired. I know, I thought of that. You go down and get yourself a pair of roller skates, you know. I cannot skate, your majesty. You can't skate. What a wasted life you've led, my lad. You ought to have learned to skate. I can skate, though. You go down and get two pairs, and I'll teach you. Go on, take him away. Give him a big feed of oysters, too. <laughs> Well, I think we'll call it a day. School's dismissed. Go on. Off you go. But, Your Majesty, there is much state business to attend to. Your presence will be needed in the council chamber. You go along, Alf, and tell them that I'll be along when I'm good and ready. I want to see my pal Jim. Everybody go on. Buzz off. Hop it. It is His Majesty's wish that the court disperse. <laughs> Down go, you Evan. Just a minute. Well, for heaven's sake, look at our Jim. Oh boy, oh boy, does he look any good? Look at this gold and everything. Listen, you Evan, meet Lord Jim. Jim, you Evan, and a nice girl. Now listen to me. This is the idea, baby. You and I tonight, Jim, and you get a girlfriend for Jim, and boy, we'll go out and make boop 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 boop. Venus, really, Your Majesty. What's the matter with her? She's mad. <laughs> now listen to me. Skate's not a bit hard once you know the way. You watch me, I'll show you all that you need to know about skate. Please, look. Well, I think it's... Well, I had a bit of bad luck then, but, but it's pretty easy to see. You have to go and see how you do. in the throne room just now? Well, what's your job around here? My name is Babette, Your Majesty. Babette, eh? And I was lady-in-waiting to the late Queen. Oh. By Jove, you're a good sort. Suppose you've got a, a boyfriend around the palace somewhere, eh? I love a young man very dearly, Your Majesty. His name is Hazan. Oh, yes. But alas, my Lord Tirano. Oh, don't mention that fellow's name to me. Oh, he has all the earmarks of a dirty piece of work to me, that fella. Your Majesty. I've... Huh? The council are waiting. Right, oh, Alf, I'll be in directly. 
I don't like Toronto. If I only dared speak, Your Majesty. You can speak, darling. Everything's okay with me because I'll tell you, I'm on your side, see? Because I'm in love too. Oh, I've got a girl called Molly. Oh, my heavens, how I love that girl. Oh, but she's not here, so... <laughs> but listen, if you've got any secrets or anything, you tell me, because I can keep a secret better than anyone in the world. I've even got secrets from myself. I have, listen. Last week, I hid a packet of cigarettes, and I've asked myself time and again where they are, and I won't tell myself. <laughs> tell me, go on. I scarcely dare whisper to Your Majesty. Toronto has designs upon the throne and on the person of Your Majesty. He has forced Tazan and myself into his scheme. The dirty dog, I'll bash him, I'll give him the great... Oh, wait, wait, Your Majesty. He is a dangerous man. <laughs> if we only dared to act now. Why not? This mountebank of a king is beginning to make himself popular with the people. The sooner we act, the less will he be regretted. Yeah, but how? He and his fat companion are drinking vast quantities of beer in there. A few drops of this in a jug. But who is to do it? You? No, our loyal friend here. No, no, my Lord Tirano. That would be murder. It means a guillotine. Not when I am your king. It will mean honor, reward. Here, take it and don't fail. You are wonderful, Joeben. You think of everything. I too shall receive my reward as your queen. Of course, of course. When have you ever doubted me, my dear Joeben? Always, my dear Torano. But I'm watching you. You must get rid of Babbitt and this pretty boy, Hosan. Uh, no, 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 no. They are useful to us. You must get rid of them or I shall. Let us be. And diplomatic. Seemingly. Oh, All the time, I will be intriguing to the king. I to be your queen. In a plot to win the throne, you and I must now conspire. You will find that you cannot alone stop the revolution. Listen, William, listen, William. Good, good, what? Will you listen to me? Listen, listen there's a fellow over there trying to poison our beer. What? I said there's a fellow over there trying to poison our beer. The dirty thing. Listen to me, Jim. Go over and switch those jugs and we'll put one over on these birds. All right. Now listen. Your Majesty, the court ballet.
Jackson and all your life, the idea of... Well, that's what you're doing, will you? Well, here we go. Here we go. Some of you go and tell him at the creamery. We'll cremate him. Well, I can't you will, Mother Go. And tomorrow the body of His Majesty will lie in state. Yes. <laughs> it should soon be over now. And then we must act at once. Oh, the suspense is terrible. Should I have done it? Oh, success will justify everything. Have courage. The king is dead! Dead? Then we have succeeded. Now is the time to strike. So now, gentlemen, the regency will be re-established to carry on the government until... Not so fast, my lord Alfam. I and my friends have other views. My Lord Tirano, is this the time or place for such discussions? That, my Lord Alfam, is as I and my friends see fit. How oh, is it? Did it ever occur to you that I'm running the army around this place? Uh, maybe my Lord Alfam is right. We will discuss this later. Way for the body of His Majesty. Way for the body of the King. <laughs> coming our way. Already half the palace is in our hands, and when they have buried that clown they call the king, we'll put an end to the arrogant Alfam, and then our way is clear. To our future King Toronto! Toronto! Listen, you. What? How much longer have I got to be defunct? Now, it's not long now. It's not long. Well, I've had enough of this and I'm going to get up. Now, you're not going to get up at all. Because you're still dead as far as anybody knows, Tom. Now, there's only me and old Alf and old Jacko in the know. But that Toronto guy's run amok. He's grabbed half the palace. My palace? Yeah. The dirty dog. Listen, him and his mob, they're trying to raise an army. Oh, are they? Yeah. And you're sitting here. No, I ain't sitting here. Listen, I'm still the warlord of this joint, and I'm training them boys on AIF lines. When the time comes... Here, let me get up. I'll go. Now, well, leave the thing alone, will you? You're not going to get up at all. Now, here's the idea. It's old Alf's plan, see? Yeah. Going to give Toronto enough rope, and let him hang himself, see? When the time comes, arrest him for treason. Not on your life. He'll get the gelatine, that fellow. That's what he'll get. Do you want to stay king of Batonia, or don't you? 
course I do. Well, then why don't you do what I tell you? Now, you stay in this room. Tom, I'm going outside to have a bit of a review of the boys. Now, I want you to promise me that you won't take one step out of this room, Tom, till, till I give you leave. Oh, I'll now, come on, son. Now, I, now. now you'll, you'll bust the plans up if you don't. Promise. Oh, all right. Good on you, son. I knew you would. Yeah. I'll see you later, Tom. So long, Jim. Hello. Guard these doors carefully. See that nobody, other than the Lord Altham, old Jacko, or the Doctor enter. Very good, Very good my Lord. Breakfast is served, Your Majesty. Good, Ad. I listen. Come here, you. Come here, sit down there. Now, Jim made me promise that I wouldn't take a step out of this room. He didn't say anything about skating, though, did he? Give me those skates. Look, Your Majesty. Shut up and give me the skates. Strange things have been happening around the palace these days. Strange indeed. One scarcely knows who rules. The Lord Altham or that cruel dog, Tirana. <laughs> There's some work You're... to be done, and I'm not going to mess around here all the time. Get out of my road. So that you shall play us false no more, I am having you taken from here to my place in the hills. You will be kept there to await my pleasure. A very pretty speech, Turano. But why your place in the hills? For her protection. And ours, Joiban. Babette is dangerous. So I begin to think. Then why not get rid of her once and for all, the treacherous baggage? Oh, you are too hasty, my dear Joiban. Too hasty, am I? And you're too oily, my dear Turanu. Do you think you can hoodwink me regarding this pretty chit? If there are no men amongst you, I'll do it. Ah! King, you are. What's the game, anyway? Now, listen, if you hadn't have butted in, my lad, I'd have stopped a revolution all by myself. Yeah, it's stop a revolution. Come down now, off look that at table, you will you? great big blob, don't you manhandle your king. Put me down, scullion. Ah, oh, shut up, will you? Put me to bye-bye, Jim. Ickle. May it please your majesty, an urgent dispatch from the front. Okay. Go on, beat it. That's from Jim. Listen, headquarters, a pitch battle today in the hills. Stop. Royal Army won on a knockout in the first round. Stop. Tirano's crowd not rotten. <laughs> Tirano captured. Stop. Lord Jim, Field Marshal. Field Marshal. Who made him a Field Marshal? I didn't. This is wonderful news, Your Majesty. Oh, I'll say it's wonderful news. Now listen to me. Come here. We're going to have the best party we've ever had in all our life. And we'll give the soldiers a wonderful welcome home, see? So you go down and tell the royal cooks and the royal brewers to spread themselves out and we'll have a wonderful beano, eh? There is still the prisoner, Your Majesty. Oh, yes. I forgot all about her. Well, what are we going to do with her, Ralph? I would advise the guillotine without further parley. Oh, you're... Mercy, Your Majesty. You're a bloodthirsty old thing, you are. The gelatine that spoil all the neck. And we should have nowhere to put the beads. I've got it. Prisoner at the bar, you are to be taken from the place where you are to the place where you are going to be, and there given a lifelong job at the Batonian wireless station, telling bedtime stories to Batonian babies. Your Majesty, anything but that. It will sweeten your nature, my dear. 
Take her away. Now listen, Alf, what about this Beano? Her Majesty, there are still the affairs of state. Oh, blow the affairs of state. We're going to have a Beano. Go and arrange it. Mike, crikey, that's great, eh? What about old Jim? What do you think of old Jim winning the fight up there? No doubt about him. Great news, isn't it, eh? Everybody happy? About the... Uh, did you hear about Jim winning the, the hills? We beat Toronto's more, isn't it, Bonster? I crikey, I get so excited, you know. When I hear them saying how we won, how we... Did he take anything off you? Because he looks as though he's sulking. You know, I get so excited. Hey, listen, do you ever have any games or anything here? Do you ever play cards or anything? I've got a pack of the cards here, look. We'll, we'll have a game of some kind. There's nobody around and we're here all by ourselves, eh? Look, play poker. Go on. Oh, look, he's agreeable. He'll be in anything. Pick a card. Uh, you won't play poker with me? Well, now, listen to me. I've asked you nicely, and I'm not going to ask you any more. I'm the king. I'll just swing my weight about for a change. Get me that table over there. You stand alongside that chair there. Come on. Mess around with me. Put that table down there. Bring that chair over there. Put that chair up there. Sit down. And stop giggling, you. <clears throat> now listen, boys, we're going to have a game of poker. See, you cut for deal, the highest card deals. An ace, of course, you would cut an ace. Four. Three. Eight, your deal. It's boss to sit down and play cards all the time, isn't it? You know, you get away from... Uh, you get away from bound and square. Uh, I, I said how I have before. Will you sit down and stop acting the goat standing up all the while? Don't be such a foot. Daddy Smack. I bet you'd cheat if you got the chance. Two cards, please. Huh? Who let that bull in you? I'll play. Will you sit down? Two cards, please. Tenor. I'll make it two bob. Four bob. Your Majesty, six bob. How many did you buy? Don't tell me. I'll see six bob. What have you got? Three aces. Yeah. Do you play the same rules over here as we play in Australia? Do three, three aces beat a pair of fives? Yes, I suppose it would. Your deal. Oh, what do you think of me? I forgot. We haven't taken any money for the gas. Six bob for the gas. Will you sit down? How many more times am I going to tell you? Sit down and stop back in the goat. Uh. Here we go. I got five kings. There's a certain amount of messing about been going on here. Give me a quid each. Your Majesty, a quid? Yes, a quid. Oh, what, what for? For royalty. And put it in lively. And give me those cards. I'll deal them after this. And there'll be no messing around. And no cheating. Anything I hate is a cheat.
pliers. Two cards, please. Three, sire. Four cards, please. Oh, yeah. I'm buying three. Two shillings more. You bet too, Bob, didn't you? Your Majesty. Hello, I, Alf, how are you? I crave pardon for this intrusion. Yes. But the young man Hosn has returned, and with him the Lady Babette, unharmed. He has had rough handling and many escapes. He begs an audience. Right, now, I'll tell him to come in. Listen, I'll raise you too, Bob. But uh, you will receive him in state. Yes. What? You will receive him in state. Now, listen, you're not going to make me strut my stuff again, are you? Get up and go on with all this my lord business. Well, I'm not going to do it now. It is you? usual, Your Majesty. Oh, look, I've look at the hand I've got. Look, a slash. And I've got to go out there and... Oh, here, you fellas put your cards on the table. Go on. And stand up. And get over there and wait till I tell you. And don't touch those cards at all. Look at I've got all blue. He had a fair hand there, didn't he, eh? Come on the court. Come on the court. Your Majesty, I crave refuge for the Lady Babette. I seized her from Tirano's camp, but she was held there against her will. She is no traitor. What? This little girl a traitor? Of course she's not a traitor. Don't be silly. I have been loyal to your majesty. She was taken there by force, sire. All right, my lad, don't get all excited. I know all about that. I saw them, didn't I? Don't you worry, my darling. You're all right with me. I look after you and Ozzy. He's your boyfriend, isn't he? I love him, sire. That's the stuff to give him. That's the way I like to hear a woman talk. Never mind about your refined messing about. I like a woman to get a wild look in her eyes and run up and grab the fellow by the face and put a headlock on him. Now acting the goat. The scar! The identical scar. What's biting you? Why, this youth has a scar on his neck exactly as your majesty. I suppose he got it pulling Babette out of the soup, didn't you, Hussie? Sire, I have borne this scar all my life. Yours, sire. Now that's funny, this is. That scar of mine's disappeared, it's gone. Gone? Mm -hmm. How long did you have it? Hmm. I got it about two days before I met you in Australia. And how did you get it? Well, you see, I was carrying a case of fish for Danny Riley, and the edge of the case cut me neck, so that's how it happened. This locket, lad. How long have you worn that? Ever since I can remember. It was my mother's. Your mother's? Why? It is our late queen. What do you know of your parentage? I never knew my parents. I was reared in the country by a nurse. Her name? Annette. The tire woman who disappeared the night the royal child was stolen. Gentlemen, there can be no mistake. This at last is the lost prince, and no foreigner but a native of Batonia, and rightful heir to the throne. Oi, just a minute. Let me understand this properly. Now listen. Is Hosey the king? There can be no doubt. And I'm not the king. Certainly not. Well, that lets me out and I'm jolly glad because I never did like being the rotten king. Go on, Ozzy, hop up on your throne. How dare you, sir. Here, lackeys. Remove the royal robes from this person. Put it there, Ozzy, old pal, and I hope you make a better fist of it than I did. How dare you, sir. Leave the royal presence at once. Hello? What's the matter with you? What's the matter? Where am I? I... I just got, got kicked out of the palace. The palace? What palace? In Batonia. Batonia? See, I was the king. I was the king of Batonia. Oh, you were, were you? Yeah. Oh, I'm the... Sleep it off, old boy.
Good night, Pop. Good night. Good night, Pop. Good night. Hello, Molly. Good night, Tommy. Mm.